Good morning from Tales of Terra. Another day. Another adventure. Today's adventure is Savannah, Georgia. This is going to be a, a warm day. It's not very hot and there is a... <laughs> <laughs> well, comparatively speaking, this is not hot. Uh, we were able to find a, a street parking and we're here for four or five hours and I see the trolley is going around so that means we're in the right district and uh, we did drive by the river we are at a square where the International Siemens house is located For Savannah, Christmas 1864 was anything but a time for merriment. Almost four years of war had taken the lives of thousands of Georgians, destroyed millions of dollars in property and left the state in chaos. As the holiday approached, so did the relentless Union Army led by William Sherman. For Union soldiers, it was a time for jubilance and celebration as General Sherman telegraphed President Lincoln, Sir, I beg to present to you as a Christmas gift the city of Savannah with 150 heavy guns and plenty of ammunition and also about 25,000 bales of cotton. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they not only got the city, but they also got the cotton. In anticipation of Sherman's occupation of the Savannah, the Confederate generals ordered the construction of the pontoon bridge to assist in the evacuation of the city. Boards and timbers from the city, wharf, wharfs and some buildings were pried up for use for flooring and rebels scoured the area for rice flats to help float the bridges. Any eyewitness compared the stream of wagon, wagons and soldiers and civilians to an immense funeral procession stealing out of the city at the dead of the night. Innocent victims of war face uncertain future. November the 1864, Sherman initiated his historic march to the city with 57,000 infantry and the cavalry, the Union Army cut 40 to 60 miles towards Worth through the soft underbelly of the Confederacy. Within days of Savannah's surrender, Union officers wrote, we are in Savannah in the enjoyment of superb quarters, fish, oyster, and the good things, and our army relishes the conditions of the affair. In southern circles, all talk was of burning homes, houses knocked to pieces by balls, murder, and dissolution. Captured cotton on the docks made a white Christmas. 1864, that's when this all happened. Most food historians believe saltwater taffy was invented in the early 1880s. The story begins with a gentleman named John Ross Edmiston. The owner of a small boardwalk postcard shop in Atlantic City, Edmiston, hired a man named David Bradley to sell taffy alongside his wares. While Edmiston eventually fired Bradley, he kept the popular candy in his shop. One night, an ocean swell flooded his boardwalk shop. In the morning, Edmiston discovered all the taffy had been soaked in salty sea foam. During his cleanup, a young girl came into the store asking if he still had some taffy for sale. Jokingly, Bradley said that he had some salt water taffy. The little girl purchased the taffy and returned it to the beach to share with her friends. Her mother heard the name and instantly loved it, and thus the name salt water taffy was born. Is salt water taffy made with salt water? While the origin of salt water taffy tells us the sea soaked the taffy, since then, salt water taffy hasn't been caught at high tide, recipes for salt water taffy vary, none contain actual salt water, especially not ocean water. You got candy? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, who was the other candy we got from? Remember? Yes. It's Heritage Market. Yes, that was in Shenandoah Na National Market, Market right? Yes.
<laughs> it feels nice now. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. King, a Baptist minister and civil rights activist, had a seismic impact on race relations in the United States beginning in the mid-1950s. Among this, among his many efforts, King headed the Southern Christian leadership conference throughout this activism and inspirational speeches. He played a pivotal role in ending the legal segregation of African American citizens in the United States, as well as the creation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. King received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Among several other honors, he was assassinated in April 1968. And he continues to be remembered as one of the most influential and inspirational African-American leaders in the history of the United States. I salute you, Mr. King. We had a special beer. Yeah, we had a special beer. Where are we parked? Uh, I don't know. It's somewhere around this sit district, but I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> you're not sure? Well, if you're not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm joking. Are I you... sent you the location when I when we parked the uh, Car? street. I sent you the location, so oh, okay. I know where I'm. I think we're going to Washington Square. Yes. I was kidding you. Here we are in Washington Square. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yes. And? Over there. I see. I so love the way to where you use torrential rain. But it's coming. Where? It's there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're right. Look at that sky. The house was built by Simon. Oh Miracle. A free person of color in 1852. Can you believe that? Sevgilim? <laughs> we just made it with maybe five seconds. Five seconds, just five. <laughs> we just made it just five seconds. <laughs> as we turn the corner to our car, it starts dripping. And then as we just came right by, <laughs> by our, oh, my torrential rain is here. Look at that. If we only waited for another 30 seconds, we would be drenched. Petya told me that the storm is coming, but it's not gonna stay. 
<laughs> I say it didn't have to stay as long as it got a, got us wet like we did in Washington DC we would have been trying to dry up at this moment but we are in the car <laughs> at one piece dry air conditioning is going on and it's <laughs> yeah we're having our cherries and our grapes there it is and enjoying the rain Right now. 